Nobody likes a cheater in golf. Am I right? Nobody likes to play with somebody who's cheat, not counting strokes or just taking gimmies. Nobody likes a cheater, right? So we don't want to be associated with those golfers, and we certainly don't want to be one of those golfers. Is what I'm talking about today a form of cheating? Hey everybody and welcome back to Golf Test Dummy, the channel where I use my game to help your game. The question I have for today is, is this cheating? I'm pretty sure it's not, but I want to ask your opinion. Is it cheating to de-loft your clubs? Now, before you answer that with a hearty hell no, just hear me out. All right, a little bit of backstory. I have been participating in some debates online over the last couple of years in comment sections and on forums. And I've gotten a lot of mixed sort of opinions about this. But take, for instance, what is referred to today as loft jacking on clubs. If you don't know what loft jacking is, it's essentially what most people view as a marketing tool and very likely probably is just a marketing tool where you take a seven iron and you stamp seven on the bottom of it. But instead of it being 33 or 34 degrees or even 31 or 32, you crank it down to a six or even a five iron loft at 26, 27 degrees, but you still stamp a seven on it. And then all of a sudden, magically, the golfers that use it say, wow, I hit this seven iron 20 to 25 yards further than I hit my other seven iron. And there's a lot of people who see right past the smoke screen and past the marketing, and they say, yeah, but you're not really hitting a seven iron. It may have a seven written on it, but it may as well have a five written on it because it's you know, a whole eight degrees stronger than what a normal seven iron is. But I had a conversation with a club fitter recently and I asked a few things. This, this guy had a wealth of knowledge about golf club making and history and fitting and all of that. He was well-rounded and uh, in a pretty respected position, I would say, in his profession. Uh, but I had some sneaking suspicions. I had some theories about how this loft jacking came to be. And it really, I think it's really only been in maybe the last, I don't know, 15 years of golf. I, I could be wrong about that, but that's, that's probably in the right area. But I think that's when it started was probably about 15 years ago. And I started to, to sort of ask myself questions about it and I formed a little bit of a theory. And I was asking him some of these questions and he confirmed what I've thought the whole time. Take for instance the clubs I have here. You can use just about any clubs, but let's just take the Tommy Armor 845 Max that I have in my hand now. It is marked as a seven iron. It is an undercut cavity. The loft on this club is 31 degrees. Now, the Tommy Armor 845 irons that I had that were not the Max irons, but they were created in, I believe, 2019, and this is the 2021 version, so this is a couple of variations after that. Uh, but the 2019 versions that I had had a 27 degree seven iron. That is pretty strong loft jacking. That turns that into essentially a six iron or maybe even a five and a half iron by traditional standards. I'm not sure. But now this one is 31. And I had to ask myself, why would they add a whole four degrees of loft back to this club? That's an entire club's loft. Most club gapping is about four degrees between clubs. Why would they weaken this back to be more like a traditional player's distance seven iron when before they were going to a seven iron that was 27 degrees and giving people more distance? What? Why would they do that? And the answer, as I dug a little bit further in and started asking questions, lined up with what I'd been thinking for years. And I don't think the loft being cranked down was the original. I don't think that was patient zero or the start of the number line. I don't think that was the original thing that, that club makers started to do. What I think happened was they looked at golfers and they realized that they had trouble getting the ball up into the air, sometimes for a lack of speed, especially as you age, you get older, you slow down, you don't have the speed, or if you're just an amateur who doesn't understand all the dynamics to the swing, you just don't swing quite as fast, unless you're really athletic or strong or uh, you know really just quick with your hands but they have trouble getting the ball into the air. It's why the hybrids and the tight lies came about. It's why all of those clubs came about is because they wanted to help golfers get the ball in the air. 
one of the main things that you enjoy as a young beginning golfer or an old beginning golfer, either one, is to see the ball take off in flight and soar into the sky and that little white ball disappear off into the blue. It, it's just, that's, that's the magic, right? That's the drug that keeps us coming back is that ball taking off in the air. But if you, if you don't have the speed or the ability and you don't understand how to apply the club to the ball just yet, you want to be able to get that ball up in the air still. So they started lowering the center of gravity. When you went from blades to cavity back irons, what they were doing was moving the weight that was in the central part of the club to the perimeter to not only enlarge the sweet spot, but also they started to add a little bit of weight toward the bottom because that lower center of gravity helps get the ball up into the air. Well, if you do that and you put the center of gravity on a, say, 33 degree seven iron, really low and you get good at it and you make the center of gravity really low to where it really helps you pop the ball up in the air. Well, now it's going to go super high for that 33 or 34 degrees of loft and it's not going to go anywhere. It's just going to pop up in the air and parachute back down. You're actually going to lose a little bit of distance and you'll get more spin on the golf ball, which is going to make it go shorter still. So what was the solution? Well, we got to help them get it up in the air, but man, it's going so high now. Let's just crank down the loft. That was the theory that I had from a long time ago. He said the exact same thing. I would say my theory is pretty much confirmed. I need my launch angle to come down a little bit lower to actually give me more distance. I was looking for some help because I'm not really fast. I didn't increase all of it from just the tech that's built into the club and the forgiveness. I also increased it another way, which is why I asked the question, A, is it cheating when they loft jack these clubs? Are you really kind of telling a fib or, or kidding yourself when you play those clubs? Is, is that something that makes you feel guilty? Do you feel guilty about that? Do you feel like that's against tradition? Do you feel like you can play that and still hold your head up high? The other thing that deals with de-lofting irons and de-lofting clubs in general has nothing to do with the actual equipment changing its engineering at all, but the golfer themselves. This is no secret. You've probably heard this before, but just in case you have it, the pros are not delivering this seven iron back to the ball with its true loft. They are impacting this golf ball with the shaft of the club, the grip, well ahead of the ball and they're de-lofting their clubs. So this is why I asked the question in the beginning. If the pros are taking a 34 degree seven iron or a 32 degree seven iron or whatever they have and they're de-lofting that and how they present the club to the ball at impact, if they're de-lofting it themselves physically and creating a 26, 27 or whatever degree seven iron, at impact for them, is that not just the same since you don't present the handle ahead of the club face and you have the shaft pretty much sticking straight up to now because you're an amateur who doesn't have pro level skill, you're getting your equipment to do the work for you. Is that cheating? I'm, I'm asking for a friend. Now I didn't pose the question in this video because I have some magical answer that I want to trick you into. I pose this question because I legitimately want to hear your thoughts and feelings on this. That is a good strike. Man, I just love these clubs. What's in the bag 2024 is coming next video. But I legitimately want to know your thoughts on this. The pros are using technique to de-loft a seven iron and essentially make it into a five iron. The amateurs who don't have those abilities are de-lofting their clubs by buying them off the rack already de-lofted because they don't have the technique and the ability to present it with that, that extreme forward shaft lean or that really strong forward shaft lean, I should say. Is that cheating? Is it any different than, say, the different drivers that they come out with? The pros would use like the LS version, the low spin version of a driver that has a differently shaped head, a smaller head, it's got less forgiveness. But we would probably choose a max version or a draw bias version so that it has max forgiveness and it actually helps straighten out the ball flight and we don't have to hit on center strikes all the time. Is that cheating? Is it different than de-lofted, pre-de-lofted irons? I don't know. 
I don't really have all the answers. All I know is, is that I love hitting golf balls. I never get tired of it. I can never hit enough golf balls. And you know what? None of us will ever master this game. None of us are going pro. So in my opinion, you should just do whatever makes you happy and whatever helps you hit the ball closer to your target and shoot lower scores. Thanks for joining me today is a question I needed to ask. What's in the bag is coming next week. I promise I'll film it for you guys. We'll go through the whole thing, the whole kit and caboodle. I'll give you the reasons why I chose the items that I did, why I've made the changes that I have, and why it's helping my game. And I have big expectations for 2024. See you next week.